So last night when we were on YouTube with um, Liz's 12 hour marathon, we were having a discussion in the chat room about um, the Juki, um, well, it was started out talking about a bobbin winder. And I was saying that I have a Juki Industrial and my Juki Industrial has a bobbin winder that is part of it and it winds the bobbin as I sew. So um, Alicia um, asked if she could see it. So I'm making a video right now. I'm just gonna show the back of it. I wanted to show you, this is my servo motor that is on there. And it just plugs right into regular house current. Here is the stand where my thread is located. And this is the bobbin thread and it comes around back right here. And then it is attached right over there. And then here's my regular thread that goes into the regular sewing machine. So I'm gonna position the camera to where it is sitting from behind where the bobbin is. And I just want you to be able to see what takes place as I sew. Of course, my camera is not wanting to stay up. Hold on just a second. <clears throat> Can you see it? There we go. Hopefully it won't fall over. Whoops. And there it went. Let me try another. better. Yeah, that'll keep it from falling. blurry. There, that's not blurry. Okay. Let's see if I can sew. And so I'm just going to start sewing and hopefully you can see it winding. And I just go on about my business and don't worry about it. And when it... I got an order yesterday for face mat, or day before yesterday for Valentine's and St. Patrick's Day face masks. So I'm working on those. also have two little taggies or lubbies as some of y'all call them little blankets that I am going to be sewing and there was a question there was a, um, Liz was sewing and she was using her walking foot that was her attachment on her machine I think she was or maybe not but she was sewing it with the minky side up. And I was saying that you have to sew with your stretchier side of your fabric down. You definitely need to pin. It's almost done. If I were just sewing straight stitches, it would already be done. But I'm trying to make use of my time and not make up work. Just to show the video, I'm trying to actually do the work that I'm supposed to be doing. So, I do assembly line and do the same thing repetitiously until I'm done with one thing before I move to the next thing. It's 
almost ready to pop. And I'll post this up to my YouTube channel. I pretty much just use white and black and mostly I use white thread so I'm not using all different kinds of colors on my bobbin. Anybody else out there still make masks? I only wear my mask. I have to wear them every day at school. And I only wear the ones I make. I have tried others. Can't breathe through them. So I just gave up on trying to use the other ones. Or they slide down my nose and it irritates me. So I figure since I have to wear them every single day, I'm going to wear the ones that fit the best and I originally made mine to fit my face. So, has it finished yet? Still a little bit more. I'm going to turn you around. I'm going to show you. Oh, there it went. It popped. Okay, so it's all done. Good thing I am in need of another bobbin. How about that? That was perfect timing. And then you just pop it off. Snip your thread. And of course, I have enough bobbins because I keep them all stacked up over here. But I'll just take the one that just emptied. And it's like a... You just move one thing. Whoops, my needle's down in my bobbin. Well, that's crazy. It still has thread. I must have just popped the thread. So I don't need a new bobbin at all. But in the meantime, I want to show you me sewing this minky and see if this makes a difference. I'm going to just move it back over here. Let's see if you're positioned right. Okay, it is. All right, so <clears throat> I have it pinned already, and it's fleece and minky. And minky kind of moves and shifts and grows in flannel, not so much. So I'm going to start on the flannel side. Start on the flannel side. this point I do try to make sure that I put a little pressure on the bottom 
because it will kind of still move and shift. As you notice, this one is doing that. But if I'm gonna do anything to where it's messed up, I'm gonna, it's on the bias right here and it's going to give a little bit. So I'm gonna just work out that eave, evening spot right here because this is on a bias. And I use this portion right here that I'm sewing to create a loop around a teething ring. <clears throat> but I'm, this part moves and that's part of the problem is sometimes you cut the way you cut it, it will shift and move as you were sewing it. So I will pick up the slack from in here. Now, as you notice this industrial machine, I have a knee lift. So I am not actually having to lift up my, at my hand. I do have one here, right here, that if I need to, but that like lifts it up and keeps it there stationary. All right, so we wanna make sure that I got that out. needles in position and don't run over your needles I've learned that the hard way you will break a needle significantly dull your needle Just keep it all together as you're holding it and you should end up in the same location as both pieces of fabric when you get there bit of pressure right there on the bottom end and I might end up being just a little bit but not much and then you turn it and you go there's still a little bit of a struggle but not near as much as what it would be if you were on the other side of the fabric so then all I have left to do is turn it inside out. Well, I take that back. I gotta cut the corners. Whoops, and I did miss a part of the minky right there. So I'm gonna sew it on this side just so I can see where I'm sewing. And it wasn't so much. But you do want to clip your corners so you don't have so much bulk in your corners. In any corner, you want to clip those corners off. Oops, that looks like it needs to be re sewn also. Because you got to make sure it's all sewn. It is definitely harder to sew with the minky side underneath, but and right here where that corner is, you're going to want to put that eave right there. Right, the rest of the corners. And now turn it inside out. Now I have already pre-made Instead of embroidering on my little taggies or loveys, I have started sublimating the child's name on one side and then I put a coordinating fabric on the other. There's the corner. I'm trying to 
Try to push all my corners out as I go. I'm gonna need a chopstick for this. Of course, I don't have one, so I'll just use a pencil. Push out the corners. And then that's what's going to fold over. And you'll sew this shut by top stitching it all the way around. So, and I'm going to also top stitch the same way with the minky down. Stitch up just a little bit more. Do some top stitching. I will say if there's one thing about my Juki, if I had to do it all over again, knowing what I know now, they have one that cost a few hundred dollars more than this one. And I personally think it would be worth the extra few hundred dollars to have the automatic cutter. And I didn't get that because I didn't really know that was a thing at the time that I bought this. I just wanted an industrial strength sewing machine. So I wanted, um, I didn't know what I was shopping for. But now that I do know what I'm shopping for, if I ever were to get another one, but see, I don't know if I'll ever will, unless I just get two, because this one will probably never die. They're built to last for years upon years upon years upon years. So, if you are looking for a Juki or an industrial, keep that in mind that um, Juki is one of the, probably one of the most popular industrial sewing machines that are out there. Okay, so here is Let's see if you can see this okay. Here is the finished taggy. This is one side of it. Child's name's all on there. And then there's rainbow fleece on that one side. And I'm gonna put the little tag right there with her name still on it. And I'm going to put um, a teething ring on it. And then that's it. That's it. So, 
side bobbin winder, taggy, sewing it on an industrial machine.